Hello everyone! Here we get to install front panel connectors. This is going to include audio connectors, as well as power switch, reset switch, hard drive activity lights. So to get started, we're going to use a different board, just because the other board was more proprietary for a specific vendor. This will be better. To start it off, what we're going to see here is that down in the left corner, we'll zoom in on this in a little bit, we're going to have our front panel audio. And down in the bottom right corner, we're going to have our front panel connectors. So first we're going to take a look at the front panel audio. So we have a zoomed in view of the front panel pins for our audio connector. And what you can see here is that we have nine pins. It looks like one of them is missing, but it's not missing. That's just because it's a keyed slot. If we take a look at the actual connector that's coming off of the front panel that we're going to plug in, it's this. This is an HD audio connector. And the HD audio connector, if we take a look at the actual holes, look at that. It's got that same keyed format where you've got that one that's going to be missing and, you know, the orientation for the motherboard. So all we need to do is slide this back onto those pins and we'll have this up and running. So we've got our audio connector connected to our motherboard and now we're going to move over to the front panel. So let's take a closer look at the front panel connectors on the motherboard. Here they are at the bottom right corner. What we'll see here is power LED, as well as hard drive LED, power switch, speaker, which is not your normal speaker, that's your errors and think BIOS and boot up issues, and a reset switch. What we need to do is take these connectors that are coming off of the front panel of our tower and we need to hook them accordingly. Well, how do you know what goes where and what orientation? That's where you consult your manual. Bing, my manual is here. So you can see my diagram for how I need to connect these, and that's what we're going to do next. So what we'll do first is we're going to take the power LEDs, and that's going to be these two right here. And we'll take these power LEDs, and we'll put them in the correct orientation. According to our picture, the positive one is going to go on the left to this pin, and the negative one will go here on the next pin over on the right. So I'll do that. And what you'll notice is there is a gap between those two, and that's okay. That's a blank slot. Again, it's keyed. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and do the power switch. That power switch is hiding underneath here. There we go. This is the power switch. And the power switch is going to go right here, where you see the power switch one, PWRSW. Same thing for this. We don't have to worry about a positive and negative. We just need to drop this thing on that power switch. Power switch is installed. Next, we're going to do the reset. So we'll find the reset switch, which is this one right here. And reset needs to go on these two, as it shows in our diagram. The reset switch is now installed. And lastly, we're going to set up and do the hard drive LED. Hard drive LED, according to our diagram, is the bottom left corner. And our front panel connectors are now installed. So it's all installed. That's awesome. If we had any USB connectors, we'd pop them in and plug them straight into these keyed USB ports. It would be fine for those as well. My system does not have those for this motherboard and this case that I'm utilizing, so we don't have to drop those in. Now, take care and practice putting these connectors on and make sure you take the time to find the manual so you know how to do it properly. You're one step closer to being an IT professional and doing one of the hardest parts of hooking up a motherboard inside of a computer case.